If you're a beginner in makeup and you want to know how to apply foundation and make sure it lasts all day, you're in the right place. Sit back, relax and enjoy. Before we even get started with foundation and all the exciting goodies, it is important to point out that looking after your skin is the most important foundation step. If you don't look after your skin, your foundation is never going to look how you want it to look. So after cleansing and moisturizing your skin, you are ready to start with your foundation routine. I would advise that you allow your moisturizer a good five minutes or something to absorb into your skin before you start with any makeup products. So let's move on to primer. A lot of people ask, is primer necessary? And I'm going to explain what primer is and why it's important. Primer is an important step in your foundation application routine. Not only does it act as a sort of adhesive between your skin and the foundation that you're about to apply, but it also smooths out the surface of your skin and creates a much smoother canvas for you to work from. The primer that I'm going to use today is the Heen Perfect Makeup Base. It's a silicone based primer and I'm going to use just about a pea sized amount for my whole base. So let me do that quickly. It's a good idea to give your primer a few minutes just to settle into your skin before you start applying your foundation. And while I'm allowing my primer to settle down on my skin, we're going to chat a little bit more about foundations and how to select them. First and foremost, the most important thing to remember is that you want your foundation shade to match your neck. For example, I have a lot of discoloration and scarring and pigmentation on my face, which makes my face overall appear quite a bit darker than my neck. Some people use self tanner, for example, and so their neck is generally always darker than their face. However it works out for you, make sure you're selecting a foundation that matches your neck and not just the skin on your face. It's a good idea for you to get samples of the foundation in different shades before you purchase the full size product. Not only will that help you to ensure that you've chosen the correct shade for you, but it will also help you to ensure that you're purchasing a foundation that is a match or a suitable match for your skin type. The foundation that I am going to be using for today's demonstration is the Pierre Rene Skin Balance Foundation. It contains vitamin E and other plant extracts, and it is a waterproof foundation. So for the purposes of this video, this is an excellent foundation to use because it is designed to last very long. Before we move on to actually applying the foundation, it's important I think to make the distinction between the different tools one can use to apply foundation with and what the difference is and how to know which one's right for you. So first of all, the most commonly used tool nowadays to apply foundation would be a damp sponge. When using a foundation sponge, you take the dry sponge, put it under the tap, squeeze it several times until it's grown to its maximum size, squeeze out all the water and perhaps press it into a dry and clean towel, giving you a damp, squishy sponge like this. Okay. The reason that we dampen the sponge is so that the sponge is not going to absorb all of the foundation, making it difficult for us to actually get the foundation on our skin because the sponge would have absorbed all of the foundation. In general, applying your foundation with a dampened sponge is going to give you a little less coverage than using a brush, which we'll talk about next. A very popular foundation application tool is a flat topped brush. This is a synthetic flat top brush. The bristles are densely packed together and the idea here is that you would buff the foundation onto your skin. Now a foundation brush like this is generally going to offer you a higher coverage right off the bat than would a dampened sponge. What I like to do when I'm looking for a full coverage look is to apply and blend my foundation with a flat top brush like this and then go over it after that with a dampened sponge to make sure that there are no brush marks still left on the skin. I suggest you place the foundation onto the back of your hand rather than pumping foundation directly onto your face. That way you can always add a bit more foundation than had you applied the whole pump to your face and it's now difficult to get that product off your skin. So what I would suggest is place one pump of foundation on the back of your hand and then in this instance we're going to use a sponge. Take your dampened sponge and press it 
into the foundation. Now, some people will tell you to start applying your foundation in the center of your face and work outwards. I say the best way that I have found is to start applying the foundation where you need the most coverage on your skin. For me, the center of my face is relatively clear. Where I need coverage is on the outsides of my face where I have um, acne scarring and hyperpigmentation and things of that sort. That's why I start applying my foundation over here. If you need most coverage through the center of your face, you start in the center of your face. So let's get on with that, shall we? When using a damp sponge, I would always recommend that you use a pressing, bouncing sort of a motion rather than a swiping motion. That's going to mesh the foundation in with your skin a lot nicer. It's going to help you with coverage and it's going to make sure that it's not wiping the foundation away. It's also a good idea to use as little foundation as you possibly can. People often ask me, how do I get my foundation to look natural? Use less products. <laughs> it's easier to add more product on or to add a little more coverage using a concealer afterwards than it is to try and remove too much foundation. Make sure that even though your foundation matches your skin, you're still blending that foundation down as you have less product on your sponge, blending it down onto your neck. If you have a tendency to get red ears like I do, I would suggest just bouncing a little of the foundation over the tops of your ears just so that it doesn't look ridiculous. <laughs> By using just one and a quarter pumps of foundation, I was able to achieve medium to full coverage using a sponge with this foundation, which I would say is really good. It's also important for me to mention to pay attention to blending the foundation into your hairline. I wouldn't advise that you put your foundation all the way up to underneath your eyes. The reason for that is that the formulas are quite different. Something that should never be underestimated is keeping your tools clean. If you use this same sponge every day for a week and it's just lying on your dressing table, obviously it's going to attract dust, germs, bacteria, who knows what all else. So make sure that whatever tool you use, you keep the tool clean. So as I said, we will do a more detailed video with concealer and color corrector and contour and bronzer and all of those good things included. But for this video for beginners, we are now going to move on to powder. So there are two different types of powders in this context. You have pressed powder. In other words, it's a compact like this. And then you get loose powder like this. Given that this beginner's guide to foundation application is meant to help you to make sure your makeup lasts as long as it possibly can, I'm going to recommend that regardless of what skin type you have, you approach your powder with a pressing it into the skin mindset. If you have dry skin, I would suggest that you press powder into your skin anywhere where you find that you have difficulty making your foundation stay on your skin. So in this day and age, people might have makeup rubbing off the ends or tops of their nose, perhaps on the chin, perhaps up on top of the cheeks over here. For glasses wearers, you might have makeup rubbing off on the bridge of your nose. For this demo, I'm gonna be using the Mio Forever Matte Pressed Powder. And once again, we go back to the damp sponge. What I would suggest here is take your damp sponge, press it into the powder, so that you have a small amount that's picked up on your sponge and then press the powder in to the skin where you find the makeup generally lifts up or gets displaced or rubs off or any of those things. 
if for example you have oily skin like me then i would highly recommend for a long lasting effect to repeat this same process all over your face By pressing the powder into your skin, you are forcing the foundation and the powder to merge with your skin and you're creating a very smooth and very solid and secure base. At this point, especially if you aren't used to wearing powder, you might look in the mirror and think your skin looks a bit cakey and a bit dry. Don't panic, mechanic. Complete the rest of your makeup and end with a setting spray. If you have dry skin, you can use your favorite face mist or setting spray. I love this tonifying face mist from Delia. But if you have oily skin, using a fixing spray rather than a facial mist is really going to help you. If on the other hand you have combination skin, there's no reason why you can't use a face mist or a setting spray on the areas of your face which aren't as oily, which for me are the outsides of my face, and then in the center of the face or anywhere that I don't want the makeup to rub off, that's when I'd use a fixing spray and I will demonstrate now. <laughs> I'm going to use a fixing spray on the center of my face. Finally, what I would suggest is going back in with your sponge, no additional product, and very, very gently just pressing everything down again after having applied your setting mist or your fixing mist. What this is going to do is really, once and for all, ensure that the powdery look disappears and that a radiant skin-like natural finish is restored, which is exactly what we're after. Of course, right now I look very strange because I have on no bronzer or contour or blush or highlight or anything, but that's the idea of foundation. Foundation we use to give us a blank and smooth canvas to work with. Make sure you come back for the next installment where we'll be talking about concealer, bronzer, contour, blush, highlight and all of those other fun goodies. I hope this was helpful for you. Thanks for watching. Bye.